In a previous video, we showed you how to get started with the dev containers extension for VS Code and the dev container CLI. As a reminder, dev containers are like separate boxes for your projects, encapsulating everything that your code needs to run from libraries to tools. It's a way for us to define our environments in a way that is reproducible and consistent, and you can use it with a bunch of different tools that support the spec. For a list of those tools, be sure to check out the link in the description. Oftentimes, we find ourselves working with a project that requires multiple and or different environments. For example, let's say you have an application and your front end is being built with Node and your back end with Python. How can we leverage the power of dev containers for these situations? That is a fantastic question, my friend, and is actually what I'm gonna show you in this video. So let's get started. To follow along to this video, be sure you have the dev containers extension for VS Code installed and the demo repo. I'll have links to all this in the description. Let's start off by going over the structure of this project. At the root level, we have the dev container folder. Inside here, we've got two folders. We've got container-1 and container-2. Each one of them contain a dev container.json file, which is the configuration file that VS Code we'll use to set up our dev containers for us. Back at the root level, we have a container-1-source and a container-2-source, and each of these contains the source for our individual services. Container-1-source is a Python service, and you see inside here we have a hello.py file, and the other one is a node.js based service, and you see in here we have a .js, which is a JavaScript file, we also see that we have at the root level, a docker-compose file. We've got multiple dev container files, but there is only one docker-compose.yaml file. You can actually create separate dev container files for each of your services that point to a common docker-compose file. So that's why we only need one here. From this demo, you can tell how you can go about incorporating more dev container.json files if you needed. You would simply add another subfolder to this dev container folder and then create your dev container.json there. So now that we're familiar with the structure of our project, let's take a deeper dive into this Docker compose file. If you've worked with a Docker compose file before, this should look pretty standard, but let's walk through a couple of keys that I wanna call out. First one being the volumes key, Essentially what it's doing is mounting the root folder, which contains the .git repo. And this is so our containers can have access to anything necessary for Git operations. The second key I wanna call out is the command key, which is also in both of them. It's set to sleep infinity, and this just ensures that our containers are always in a running state. Finally, the links key, which is only set in our first container, is set to container two, which enables communication with both containers. Since it's already set in the first one, we don't have to add it to the second one. So this is what our Docker compose file looks like, but we also know that we have multiple dev container.json files, and these files contain the metadata and settings required to configure our dev containers. So let's take a closer look at those. Let's consider our demo project here. We have a dev container.json file for each one of our services and we can click to open them. And I'm just going to uh, minimize this left side here. We can see that the dev container for the Python service, we're calling it container one. We're pointing it to the Docker compose file that we have at root level. This service is container dash one, which is referencing that service name inside of that Docker compose file. Another thing to call out here is the shutdown action, which is set to none. This is important because it's telling the dev container like, okay, if you close VS code, keep the container running. And then finally, we have the workspace folder, which contains our code, essentially the source for this project, specifically for the Python service, which we have in container-1-src, which makes sense. We go back here to our explorer and we have inside of container-1-src is our Python file, right? Let's take a look at our dev container.json for our second service. And we can see that it looks pretty much the same. The only thing changes here is the name, the service that we point to in the Docker compose file and the workspace folder. Obviously we need to set it to container-2.source because that is where our 
Node.js service lives. Now that we know what each dev container.json looks like, how do we actually go about working with these containers? Let's take a look at that now. If you don't have the repo opened up in VS Code, go ahead and do that. Once that's opened up, make sure you have Docker running, of course. We're gonna do Control Shift P, and then we're gonna find the uh, command here that says reopen in container. And then we're gonna select container one. We're gonna start by using containers in a single window. So having multiple containers running, but using a single VS Code window. This should take a few moments to set up for you, but once it does, it's gonna reload your VS Code window, but only gonna display your VS Code environment, your dev container, and your environment for that first service. So now if I go to the Explorer, you can see that really all I see is hello.py, because again, I'm only working in the context of the first service, the container-1-source, right? So I can put a little breakpoint here and then go to run and debug, like run and debug and I'll say Python file. And you can see here, we've got a full on Python environment going. Again, the goal here is to leverage multiple containers within a single VS code window. So what I can do is hit control shift P once more, but this time we're gonna look for switch container. And now we're gonna select container two because that's where our node.js environment and source is in. And once again, this should reload, but this time with all your goodies for container-2-source, right? So we'll go back to the folders here and we see that we have the JavaScript file in here. And again, we can hit debug and I should be able to, yes, I can hit play here. And you see we have hello world. Oh, I forgot to set a breakpoint, set a breakpoint, run it again. And you can see we have our debugger running. And this is exactly how you work with multiple containers within a single VS Code window. But what if we want to use multiple VS Code windows for our multiple containers? Well, from the terminal, in, I'm just gonna show you a different way to open up the folder in VS Code. Make sure you're actually inside of your repository and then type in code, space, and a dot. That's gonna open up VS Code with your project. On the left side, if we click on folders, you can see our project structure here. And it's actually telling us, hey, do you wanna open this up in dev containers? You see here, we have the option to reopen in container. You can do that, or you can do control shift P, type in reopen in container and select that first one. And then that's gonna load up the container and the dev container environment for our Python service, right? You see here, Back again to the left side on folders, we have our hello.py here. Got a little uh, breakpoint still set there. From here, you can do file, new window, and that opens up another window, or you can go back to your terminal and once again do code dot, and it opens up a, another window for us. And we can do reopen container, but select container too. Go ahead and let that run. You see we have our JavaScript file and our JavaScript service here. It's starting our container, still have a little breakpoint here. And then you can see I have one window with our container one and the other VS Code window with container two. And now you can interact with both containers at once from separate windows. One last thing I wanna cover, let's say you want to extend your Docker compose file for development, which is good practice since referencing an existing deployment or a non-development focused Docker Compose can have some potential downsides. You should use a single Docker Compose file that extends both services as needed and is referenced in both of those dev container dot json files. So let's consider this docker compose uh, dot dev container dot yaml. I would reference this inside of my dev container dot json or all of them actually inside of the docker compose file key. And I would just add it to the list here of docker compose files that it references. Keep this in mind. And there you have it. We covered the structure that you need to leverage multiple dev containers for your projects. We showed you how to actually use them in a single VS code window or with multiple windows. For more tips, tricks, and resources on all things VS Code and all things dev containers and more, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and we'll be back soon with more videos. Thanks for watching.